Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you how to uh, operate uh, a, a GNSS system in base and uh, uh, rover mode. This means that uh, I have two units, one is going to be a base station, this is the base station. I put it on a small tripod, usually we want a much higher tripod, but uh, for this tutorial it's going to be okay like this and one uh, is a rover unit, which is a, a unit that I can bring around uh, and take measurements uh, with. So I'm showing uh, uh, how to do this uh, with uh, two, uh, a pair of MLID Reach RS Plus devices, um, which uh, are, uh, uh, we purchased uh, at the University of Bremen. So I don't get any money from uh, this company, but uh, uh, I've been using as a client their GPS systems for a while now. I should say that I'm pretty happy with these. Uh, we have both uh, these units, which are a single band units, uh, and uh, the newer version, which is the RS2, which are uh, dual band uh, units. So this is actually uh, pretty, um, pretty simple to use. There's, uh, uh, I'm gonna connect them and show you how to connect them to my uh, phone. They work with both Android and uh, uh, Apple devices. So there's an app which is called ReachView 3. This tutorial is with ReachView 3. Uh, there's a previous one which is ReachView um, 2, I think it's called, uh, but the newest one is ReachView 3. So if you haven't upgraded yet, you can uh, upgrade the firmware and start using the newest app, which has some cool features in it. So I'm going to show you how to uh, place the base. Uh, I'm going to tell you a few different things about uh, uh, the base station and uh, then I'm going to uh, start a survey with, uh, with the rover. Let's have a look how to place the base first then. Okay, so um, I put my base on a tripod. Usually we want to have uh, a much higher tripod because uh, the base is very important that it can uh, see as much of the sky as possible, as I was saying before. But for this exercise, it's gonna be okay. Although we must keep in mind that we have a house right here. You can see that in the background. There's a hill just in front of uh, in front of the base. There are some trees down there. So it's actually um, a bit uh, um, hidden. The signal will be a little bit hidden, but uh, I think we can, uh, we can work out with that. Um, the main concept uh, to keep in mind if you're a novice in this kind of surveys is that the base station once you place it you need to know its position you need to know its position very accurately and uh, once you place it the base stays there and it stays connected um, turned on and connected with radio to the rover which is uh, the GPS which is moving uh, moving around good so uh, what I like to do before I start any survey, uh, this is a little bit uh, something a little bit uh, old, but uh, I like to turn on my instruments and let them uh, static for a while. I'm going to turn on this one too. Great. And let them static for a while before I actually uh, start the survey. This is actually uh, a good thing uh, to have them start seeing the satellites, initialize, and um, basically um, be ready to go when I am starting the, uh, the survey. Now, uh, there are different ways. Uh, I told you that uh, it's very important that uh, the base station, uh, uh, that we know the position of the base station. There are different ways to do it uh, or to know it precisely. The easiest one is uh, to have uh, a, an official benchmark, for example, from the government um, or the military services sometimes uh, or the geodetic services in different countries. There are different authorities providing them. Uh, as I was saying, a benchmark from some official authority placed on the ground. So if you have that, you will know also exactly the coordinates of that spot. And this you can, uh, um, you can program your base to, uh, to, to be on. Uh, 
if you don't have that, which is for me the majority of cases, there are many situations where you do not have an official benchmark nearby. You have to remember that the base and the rover, uh, especially for the L1, um, uh, L1 M lead receiver should be fairly close to each other. They are connected via radio. So you cannot put your base, for example, 20 kilometers from your, uh, from your rover because the radio signal will not, will not get there. But uh, um, there are other ways to actually make sure that uh, you are uh, getting a precise position, as precise as possible. I'm gonna show you only one, which uh, implies that you have an internet connection and uh, a base station from some official authority or the connection to an NTRIP service nearby and available to your uh, in your area. So this is uh, what I'm going to show you today. If you do not have that, uh, then what you can do is uh, leave your base static for several hours as much as possible and then you can post-process the data. I'm not going to show you this because there are a tutorial in the Emily website on how to get a precise positioning either with a base station nearby or also with uh, um, uh, point, precise point positioning services that are given by, uh, for example, NASA on, or the Natural Resources of Canada uh, Authority. Um, but today uh, I'm going to show you how to connect to an N-Trip service. Here we are in, uh, in Italy, we are in northwestern Italy and uh, there is uh, a service given by the region that I'm at, uh, Regione Liguria, which basically broadcasts uh, corrections for any kind of GPS. I subscribe to that service, here is completely free, sometimes you have to pay something for it, depending on the country where you are. Uh, but uh, I got a username and password, I'm gonna show you how to put them and how to give a precise position to the base. Um, and then we move to the rover and we do a survey. We take a few points around here with uh, the rover, okay? So I'm gonna show you the screen now of my phone and uh, let's see how to do this. So now we are on my phone and uh, I will show you how to connect to, um, to the base, first of all. Uh, and especially how to connect to it uh, in a way that we also have, uh, uh, we can also uh, use the connection to the internet of my phone. So uh, what we do first of all is go into the Wi-Fi setting and turn it on. And you see if I go in my setting that I have the base and the rover, they're both on, so the base and the rover. The first uh, thing we want uh, is to um, connect to the base. You see that now I'm already connected here. The password usually for these uh, um, for these uh, um, GPS is, is MLID Reach altogether, unless you changed it. Uh, and what I'll do is first of all go to MLID, and you see uh, if I go on the Reach View 3 app that I am looking at the. Uh, base here. So now I am basically connected to the base. What I want to do is now I am connected directly to it, but what I want to do is uh, be connected to it via the Wi Fi of my phone. So uh, what I'll do is uh, go here in settings, then go on Wi Fi. Now you see that I am connected to the hotspot and uh, there are a number of uh, there are a number of uh, other hotspots to which i connected in the past uh, i'm gonna press here connect to the hidden hidden network and here you have to know very precisely the name of the network let's cross check it so every um, phone has this uh, hotspot um, let's see if I can, okay. Tethering and portable hotspot. And uh, the hotspot is called, uh, in my case, Huawei P20 Pro. That's the name of my phone. And I put a nice password here, Ale phone. So I, I have, I can 
copy this one and I'll go again here and here I paste the name of my connection and here I paste my password so now if I connect nothing happens but if I look at the Wi-Fi it's gonna be there so now it disconnected from uh, uh, from the the Amlid because uh, um, I told him to connect to something else and it's trying to connect to the rover but I don't want that so now I'm just gonna turn on the hotspot and if you should be able to see it here in a second if you're not you have to just power on off and on again the base so this is what i'm gonna do i don't think so i turned uh, off and on the base again and you see that now uh, i i left i let the um I let the, the uh, connection hotspot on and now you see that here I have the base connected. So this is great because I can go back and now my base will be here again. But the difference is that this time I am connected to the base, not directly, but via a Wi-Fi bridge, which is the Wi-Fi of my connection, of my um, internet connection. So what I do have is... Uh, a um, uh, is a connection to the uh, to the device but also a connection to the internet which i will use to then uh, plug in uh, into the base station okay. sometimes it actually needs to restart so let's restart the reach view it's connecting and now it's connected and you see that it's connected if you go here you see that it's connected here in the UAW P20 Pro uh, to the UAW P20 Pro um, um, connection. Uh, now that we uh, connected to the base via the hotspot that I created on my phone, we have access uh, basically to the, the base station and uh, to the um, uh, and, and to the internet at the same time through uh, the internet provider that I have on my phone. This is useful because I can use this connection as I will show you in a second to connect to a um, external services providing uh, uh, providing uh, uh, accurate base positions. So um, a thing I did as well is uh, you see down here in the available there is uh, uh, the rover as well so I followed the same procedure and I inserted the, the Wi-Fi data on the rover as well so I, I can switch between the two um, just without changing anything just um, going into into the rover um, I'll show you later how we collect data with the rover so before everything before doing everything though we need to make sure that the base station is uh, uh, standing and fixed and the very first thing we do is go to the logging here and make sure that we are logging the raw data from the uh, base station. Uh, in this case, it's already going. I have it automatically turning on whenever I uh, turn on the, the station, but uh, now I'm stopping it. So you can see what uh, what uh, happens here. So basically here, um, it's, it's a system that allows you to record the raw data that we receive from, from the satellites, basically, uh, and from the base correction that is received by uh, via the, the regional authorities. I would suggest always to make sure when your base is fixed and it's not going to change its position to turn on the recording. You don't have to worry too much about uh, um, 
space you see that here i have 2.2 gigabytes but i have literally uh, you know several weeks of data of gps data inside the uh, inside my gps so uh, the storage space that will be occupied is not that much but this recording logs both from the base and as i will show you in a second from the rover it's very important to make sure that we can post process if something goes wrong by any chance so uh, now that i made sure uh, I have my logging you see down here in logs that there are all the logs that I collected throughout the last uh, the last year probably so and I can uh, press on the icon here and download them on the icon on the right and download them good now that I am uh, sure that I'm logging that if something goes um, wrong I will be able to come back and post process the data uh, what I need to do is to first of all connect to uh the correction input so i go down here uh, into settings correction input you see that here i already have this end trip correction usually it's set to off we can do it again and uh, we can change it to end trip what we have here is uh, this little uh, icon on the right where you can actually choose which service you connect to now here you can add your own service but i did it already for this particular service so i'm going here edit and i'm going to show you what it is so basically uh, here we have a name for the profile we have an ip address which is the address from where the uh, correction data is being broadcasted we have a port usually for gnss data is 2101 but it may change according to which service you're using and then we have a username and password and here is the username and password i got from the regional authorities when i subscribed to the service sometimes you have to pay to get this username and password depending which service you use very important is to select correctly your mount point you see that here there are all the mount points that are um, provided by this ip address um, you know each one of these mount points is a station broadcasting data so uh, in this case i have this near tree it's a service providing you the nearest station to your position and this is the one i'm i'm using right now so i'm gonna go down here and uh, save the profile that's great and i'll go back I'll go back to the end trip service now you see that on the upper right hand corner uh, there is a float uh, uh, icon and it's in yellow uh, there are three different uh, solutions or types of solutions you can get from a base station it's either single which means that you are not receiving the corrections float which means you are receiving the corrections but they are not very accurate and then there is a fix uh, usually usually you need to make sure to have a fix before you actually proceed uh, to the next uh, step it may it may entail to stay several minutes um, at the same place with the base standing and connected to the service and uh, therefore i'm gonna wait a little bit and once we have the fix we can proceed with the next step very good now you see on the upper right hand side i waited about a four or five minutes and you see that now i have a solid green on the right uh, upper right side uh, with fix written in it so this means that i'm receiving uh, a good um, a good uh, signal from the base station from the regional authorities if i want to check here i go to status and uh, up here you see the uh, the first is the position of the base you see that we have a horizontal accuracy of 0 0.014 meters it's 1.4 centimeters and a vertical accuracy of one centimeter so this is pretty good and if you scroll down you see that we are receiving the corrections of course at some point uh, depending on uh, on uh, how um, how frequently the corrections are broadcasted you see that it goes in waiting corrections and then receiving corrections but it's usually very quick and you see that the baseline so the the position of the base it's about it's 
6.9 kilometers from where we are and down there at the base position you see the position of the base station that is given to us by the regional authority now you need to do all this to make sure that you have a good positioning of the base and now i'm going to show you how to do that now um, by being in fix you can go into settings and go all the way down to base mode so in base mode there is the possibility to average coordinates and you can configure here um, usually if i am in fix uh, i use uh, let's say three four minutes but for this uh, for at this point uh, uh, for the tutorial we we'll just do one minute and the coordinate entry method uh, here you can select between manual so if you know exactly where your gps is standing for example if you are on top of a benchmark or an official benchmark of the government you can actually uh, put um, uh, the coordinates manually and you should always have to remember to put the antenna height so you you always have to uh, remember to put uh, how high you are above the benchmark instead if you are working as we are now um, you can go into average fix this means that we are um, averaging on uh, on the spot the coordinates and we go save you can also do average float or average single but of course it's going to be less precise and uh, 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 you should not probably do that now usually when I'm in fix uh, I like to do a few minutes uh, but now we're gonna do just one minute what the GPS is doing right now it's basically collecting uh, coordinates and averaging them in order to have the best positioning solution for the point uh, of, of the base and it's uh, as we say in jargon initializing the base so this position of the base will be um, what we uh, what we will use to do our entire survey basically so you see that it's going on uh, if you lose the fix you can also restart it but uh, we have a pretty good positioning surprisingly because we are not in a very good spot as i told you before but i was being probably pessimistic about it okay uh, one thing I would suggest you to do right now, once you have these uh, positions, this is the, the coordinates of your base station. So one thing I would suggest you to do is to just take a picture of it or note them down somewhere, uh, because it might be useful for you uh, to have them once uh, you do post-processing. So right now, everything is good. Uh, the base station is set up. Normally, what we could do is just going here into Wi-Fi. You see that I'm connected to my phone and just uh, you see that there is this red red writing down here. Um, turn Wi-Fi off to save battery power. So this, uh, if you're sure that you, do, you did everything, um, can help you save some battery. I'm not gonna do this because we might wanna go back and recheck a few things, but if you're planning several hours of uh, um, positioning, you might wanna turn off the GPS. But let me go back here, and now we switch to the rover, and we will see how to make a proper survey. Good, now we are, uh, I took the rover in my hands and uh, what I'm doing, I'm just uh, switching to the rover. As I told you before, I connected it exactly the same, same way I connected the, um, uh, I connected the base to my hotspot. Now you see here that uh, on the top, immediately everything changed and now we have a float solution. Uh, right now, before we i explain you what that means because the meaning is different from uh, what we were what we were saying before i will put myself in a position with a good view of the sky also with the rover i'm not too far from the base just for your reference and uh, i'll show you how to set up everything so what we need to do is go first of all into logging and make sure that the rover is logging again here it's logging you see that i've been i turned it on some time ago like an half an hour ago so it's it's going it's logging if i want i can stop it 
and restart it. And usually I want to note down the time so I know exactly at what time I stopped and restarted and then I know which file I am uh, I'm using. Okay. So the thing I have to do uh, to make sure that uh, I, I'm using the rover is going here. And you see that before uh, for the base our correction input was the entry. But now uh, the, the correction input is LoRa. So it's the radio. Okay, we need to make sure that we set up the correction uh, in the same way we set up the correction output in the base. I realize now I didn't show it to you, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you very quickly. So here we have the correction input, LoRa. I'm noting down 868 MHz at 9.11 kilobyte per second and uh, I can switch back to the base and make sure so that the correction output I'm sending out with the base it's again 8.68 at 9 at 9.11 kilobyte per second so basically what is the output of the base it's going to be the input of the rover so i'm switching to the rover again going to the settings and correction input it's going to be the same so now if uh, i had a very good um, view of the sky i would see a fix here what i can do again is uh, wait a little bit usually it takes a little bit for the two to get a fix between the two so i'm gonna stop the recording now and we are gonna see how long it takes okay uh, it took me a little bit to have a fix about a few minutes uh, as i told you i'm not in a perfect uh, spot uh, just before we go on i'm going to show you uh, which kind of uh, settings i have in my gps usually these are coming uh, straight out of out of the box but uh, uh, in the raw in the in the base uh, up here you have static and uh, instead in the in the rover you have to put kinematic here you have you know i i gave it a pretty wide elevation mask angle so i see more satellites and a pretty high snr mask so i also get degraded messages and here the update rate so this is uh, how 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 much the uh, rate is updated uh, from uh, the base so how, uh, every every how how much time i receive coordinates i put here at five hertz uh, whereas in the base i'm outputting at one hertz so this is this is what i have here now uh, you see on the upper right corner that we have a fix this means that we are ready to actually start our survey so we go to the second button from below and we initialize the survey so here i can put uh, the project name test uh, test test it's very hard to write with a uh, mobile keyboard alessio and i can put a description now here uh, i have the opportunity on the possibility to show uh, or to select the coordinate system I want to work with. I usually work in WGS84, but you may want to choose metric systems, for example, or any other system in the EPSG system. So you can select your coordinate system. And very important, you can also have a look at which vertical uh, uh, datum you want to use. Now, uh, my personal preference is to always collect data in, the, in ellipsoid height and then make some uh, transformation uh, in some GIS uh, software. But uh, you might want to choose something different. So, for example, you ch if you choose Italy, uh, I think I downloaded, yes, I downloaded the uh, Italian Italgeo 2009 height and this uh, approximates not anymore the ellipsoid but mean sea level we can we can do it like that so as we are in italy we can we can do it like that so this is uh, how i am uh, uh, what i'm seeing uh, before i do anything else i go up here and i you know, on this button up here and uh, i make sure that i am using the correct pole height i have 1.8 uh, 
And in this case, I'm also using this little thread adapter to adapt the thread of the pole to the thread of the GPS. So uh, if I wasn't using uh, it, uh, I would have to do this, but I have to add 21.5 millimeters in height. And then I'm gonna save it. Okay, now you see that I'm pretty close. The base and the rover are pretty close. In fact, I am one meter uh, from, from the base. And the very first thing I do usually is go really close to the base, as close as possible to the base. Now you see that I'm moving and get the first point actually where the base is standing. So I'm measuring it and I am going to measure for about 10 seconds now the more you um, you average i'm going to tell you a couple of things about this screen here this is the screen we use to actually uh, collect the data uh, the longer i average uh, the better it is now i'm i'm using 10 seconds because i have a good fix but usually i want to average let's say for 20 seconds 30 seconds a minute depending on how long um, how long uh, you, uh, or, or how good is the reception of your satellites in your area. And usually I turn on also fix only. This avoids me or allows me to avoid uh, if I lose the fix to collect data that I think are good, but then they're not. So if I, if I um, press on collect fix only, then I will be sure that uh, I am only working with, uh, with fixed data. Now, what I'm doing is moving a little bit around. You see that, okay, now that I'm moving, the, oops, sorry, the rover is moving around with me. You see that we have a fix, so the two radios, uh, the radio of the base and the radio of the rover are talking to each other. And I went a little bit higher than the base, let's say I am uh, a little bit higher, maybe a couple of meters. And I'm gonna press again, measure. I make sure that I am on level before pressing measure. And there we go. And the 10 seconds are done. Now, for example, I could, uh, let's see if there is something nice I could measure. Um, I could go a little bit down again. You see that the rover is moving, but the that point that I place, the point number two, is still there. So I can move around. I'm passing by my base again. I have a stairs, a few stairs here. I can go up and down. Just trying to make this a little bit diverse. You can see that here I am uh, again a little bit further away from the base, and you see that the elevation has, has decreased. And now we can again make a 10 seconds measurement. Good. I think that's that's it for our for our trial. You see that we have three points and that we can actually that we can actually uh, leave the base and the rover being Point number one, it's very close to the base. This is this is a few centimeters because I really put the, the rover as close as, as I could to the base. Now that I have all this, uh, what I can do is uh, have a look at my points. You see, I can, uh, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll show it again. I can go down here and see all my three points. And then you see that I can also stake them out. So I can actually, um, let's see, if I, if I wanna go, let's say to point number two, I can stake it out. I have my rover still connected and I'm moving with my rover towards the point number two. And this is guiding me basically to go again to point number two. Maybe in case I want to make another point there because I realized uh, I, it was not good enough. So you see that I'm going towards point number two. I'm getting close, I'm getting close, I'm getting close, I'm getting close, I'm getting close. There was nothing on the ground where I put point two. So <laughs> I really don't know where I was, but you know, close enough. 
I am actually, now I'm farther away. Okay, now I'm actually in the radius of point number two. You see? And this is how I can stake it out. And you see that I have the distance and elevation from the former point two that I got. So this is useful if you wanna refine some of your points somewhere and uh, and uh, or look at them so you can also go to point number one here and if you press here you have everything you want to know about point uh, the point antenna height etc etc coordinate systems etc etc okay uh, this is pretty much it I just want to show you for the last time one one last thing um, how to export the points so if you want to export your point you just go back to the project you press these three dots up here and you just export them and you can export them in CSV let's see if I can uh, I usually send them to myself via email So I, I opened up my email, I had this, this nice CSV file. You see that this is how it looks like. So I have the name of the point, one, two, three. I have easting and northing, let long. I have the elevation. I have the, um, well, the description, I didn't put any description, but I could have. Uh, the longitude and latitude, well, this is the same as easting and northing because I use WGS84. I have the ellipsoid height. Uh, I have the root mean square error for easting, northing, and elevation. And then I have a combination of the lateral root mean square error. This is the positional, positional error. I have the antenna height that has been used, the solution status, so fix as I want it, when I started and when I finished collecting. Samples, I was collecting at 5 Hz for, one me for uh, 10 seconds, so I have 50 samples. And uh, here I have also recorded where the base easting and northing, um, northing is. And the baseline is the distance from the base I was, I was recording. Okay, so this is all, all I have. Um, and of course, uh, you have to take care of one thing. Uh, here I selected, uh, if you look at elevation here, you have 51 meters. And it's the elevation of, uh, with respect to the ital geo, so to the geoid I choose. So 51 meters, I would say, above the mean sea level as defined by the geoid. But uh, here you have the ellipsoid height, which is um, 99, uh, uh, 99 meters. Uh, and this is basically the difference between the ellipsoid and the geoid. Usually uh, these two for me are the same because I use to collect, I, I am used to collect ellipsoid heights and then to process them in other, play, in other ways. Good, so uh, this is it for this uh, base and uh, uh, rover tutorial. It's, uh, it was not uh, optimal because, uh, as I told you at the very beginning, uh, we are in a very bad situation for which concerns view of the sky, but uh, this is basically my backyard, so uh, I prefer to be in a, in a, a good uh, environment to do this rather than uh, having to do this on the road somewhere. Um, a few final words. Number one, always remember to place the base, of course, in a very good environment. If you cannot get a precise positioning as we did in this tutorial, make sure you acquire as long as possible data and record them and store them into the base because then there are ways to post-process it. Then you can post-process this data. And by long times, I mean even hours with a double, uh, with a single receiver like, like these ones. Um, always remember to um, Always remember to, uh, before you turn off the Wi-Fi of the base, always remember to initialize the base, to put the coordinates in there, and then you can really start your survey. And uh, yeah, keep your view of the sky, of the rover and the base as much as possible. And of course, remember that as long as you uh, stay close to the base, everything is going to be fine. If you go too far away, the radio signal will become weaker. If you go behind an obstacle, the radio signal will become weaker or you will lose it. 
and then you will have a single solution and if you have a single solution or even a float as we have here your precision uh, your accuracy i should say it's very very low so it's uh, several uh, decimeters to meters so just forget about uh, a very good uh, accuracy and precision if you don't have everything green in your fixed float single uh, upper right and corner for which concerns the amen. Thank you very much and uh, let me know if you have questions or ideas and I can uh, uh, make another tutorial.